Hey everybody, it is Zach the Welder here, and as you can maybe guess from this big box here with Miller on it, I bought a new welder. So let's unbox it here. So I bought, after seeing it at Fabtech, a Miller XMT400. And I'm pretty excited about it. So here it is in all its glory. So you get a book, a power cord, and it looks like that's about all that comes in there. And since I am not the Hulk, I am gonna have to take this off the table here to take it out of the box. But the awesome thing about this over an XMT350 is this is, I think, 75 pounds versus the XMT350 is like 95, 98 pounds, something like that. So I should be able to just do this. And I don't even crossfit. So here we go. It is shorter, it's a little taller, about the same width. Um, but like I said, the big thing there is just the weight difference. And yeah, I don't really like hefting an XMT350 in and out of my back, the back seat of my truck all the time. So this will be nice for those bigger jobs where, you know, like a CST280 doesn't really fit the bill or anytime I need to run wire. All right, so we are plugged into the shop and I am ready to throw the switch for the first time on this guy and I hope that it actually works. Oh yes, this is exciting. This will hopefully make me a lot of money over the years. Okay, so if you've never run one of these before, the controls are basically the same as your XMT350 up here. You've got output on, output that is switched. Um, you've got a uh, stick on top here, 6010, 7018. You've got a gouge setting. Um, you've got a lift arc setting, and then you have TIG and remote over there. Oh, this I take that back. On this side, it's flux core or um, MIG with the output of this on, like if you're using a, a wire feeder or like a wire box kind of deal. So, yeah, I'm excited. I've got a job coming up here where I actually have to weld some carbon steel pipe, so I figure I'll use that for this. Take some video, I hope you guys enjoy. So this is some three inch schedule 40 carbon steel pipe, which if you watch my channel is pretty unusual. This is the first time I have welded any carbon steel pipe in probably five plus years. I really don't do a whole lot of that. And uh, especially stick welding carbon steel pipe, I almost never do that. So this was a cool learning experience. So this is a uh, DynaBraid uh, belt grinder here. I really like using these uh, in the shop. If you've got a good air supply, they're awesome. They don't make anywhere near the mess that a just standard grinder makes. So I always like to keep a super tidy shop, not contaminate it with carbon steel. So for that, it's perfect. So I'm going to tell you the first thing I did wrong here. I went ahead and used my normal knife edge uh, bevel prep for pipe, which uh, works great for TIG welding. Not so much for trying to run an eighth inch 6010 on three inch pipe like this. Uh, it uh, got out of control way too fast and uh, I uh, ended up just not having a good time here. So right there, that whooshing sound, and then when you have very little sparks coming back at you, almost everything is going inside the pipe. That's what you're looking for for an open route like this. 
I really didn't have things set up right here. Uh, I just don't do, and do enough of this to really kind of be decent at this. Uh, later on, I went from a 1.8 60-10 to a 3.32 60-10 and kept the same bevel prep, and it actually worked out really well. But these first ones here, I really struggled to get a decent root in there. I either was way too hot and blew out my keyhole, or I was not burning through. So... You know, like I said earlier, this is a drain line. There's no back pressure on it, and uh, it was a learning experience for me. So on this joint right here, I ended up using a 332 6010 with my standard bevel prep, and it ended up working out really well. Just uh, with the 1 8 with that narrow landing there, it just there was too much heat and uh, just didn't really work out. But this worked out really well here, so I was running about 65 amps with that 332, and it put in a really decent route. I was pretty happy with that. So I used this as a learning experience and uh, I went ahead and capped these with some 7018. I just used some 332 Lincoln Excaliburs and again I don't stick well the whole lot so it was a good chance to kind of build some skills here and uh, I, I was really glad that I did that. I, it's not something that I do all the time and you know by the time I got to the last joint here they actually look pretty decent. So pretty happy about it and again like I said I mean this is just a drain line so you know not worried about it blowing up and hurting somebody.
Well, here it is installed. All it does is take steam and uh, condensate that uh, comes out of that boiler and moves it from down there in the corner down here right directly into that drain. So not a super critical part and uh, was happy with the way it turned out. So thank you all for watching.